you joined us again uh, on this glorious day. I know what you're thinking and uh, I'll tell you what, you know, I decided to sleep in the attic last night and I woke up in the morning very early, about four in the morning. It was bright and I was sleeping under the skylight and it was pouring down rain. It felt like Christmas to me. I know it's in the middle of summer and uh, it's funny to say that, but it actually felt like Christmas. And I thought, what a wonderful day. It's gorgeous. But I then I thought, if I tell somebody what a gorgeous day, they'll be laughing at me or they'll be thinking I'm being sarcastic. But it's a gorgeous day and it is raining. <laughs> it doesn't always have to be sunny to call it a gorgeous day. Any day is made by the Lord. Every day is the day of the Lord. We don't have to celebrate new moon or keep Sabbath holy. We have to keep every day holy. Every day of the Lord is holy. Because the Lord is holy and everything he makes is good. And he said it was good. He created you and he said it was good. <laughs> and he saw and he said it was good. He created the universe and he saw and he said it is good. Everything that God creates is good. Rain is the dew of heaven and it is good because it blesses the land. Why do we think it only has to be sunny to call it a gorgeous day? It's still gorgeous. You know, Psalm 118 verse 24 reads this is the day that the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it let's rejoice and be glad in it this is the day that the Lord has made I know uh, my audience are all over the world you might be in a country uh, it's quite cold there at this time uh, you might be in a country that is quite hot. However, the Lord has made this day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I wanted to share something with you before we uh, enter into prayer and intercession. I got reports uh, from Iran uh, that they were told by their own authorities and media that uh, this summer there's going to be severe drought all over the country and there will be shortage of water. So they were warning people. Iran, for those of you who are not familiar, is a country with four seasons although it's vast but each part of it almost has four seasons and even in the hottest summers you still have um, water in dams and wells although you don't have rain in the summer but you still have water in the dams usually but since the overthrow of the last monarchy in Iran over 43 years ago. Mullahs have ravaged the country, have mismanaged everything including water and because of that rivers have dried out, lakes even have dried out around the country, dams have been emptied and haven't been replenished because of the mismanagement. Forests 
have been destroyed and towers have been built in them for, for, the, for their own people, for their own, not the people, but the authorities, the, the powers, the mullahs. Uh, for the last at least um, a couple of years, they've been facing major droughts, different parts of the country. And now in the capital, they were warned that they would have severe drought and shortage of water. So, uh, when I heard that, uh, I thought of a story that my spiritual father had told me, which boosted my faith, really. His name is Ray. Uh, he told me once he'd gone to Africa, he used to love Africa, he used to travel there and preach there in different countries in Africa. And he said once he'd gone there and he told people to come to this place to worship and, you know, have a sermon there on a particular day. And there were people who were against Christianity altogether there and uh, so they opposed fiercely and, the, and amongst them there were witches uh, who threatened him that they would bring severe rain down on people so their assembly would be dispersed or it wouldn't even be held. And when he said that, I said, so what happened? Because I know, uh, you know, when we talk about witches in the West, we just think mm, it's some, you know, something fishy about it. It's not really true. There is no such thing. But they are real and they have real powers because they're worshipping Satan and they gain their power from Satan. So I said, what happened? And he said, nothing. We went ahead as planned and we did the service and everything went well. I said, so what happened to their voodoo and, and witches coming in? And he said, you know what, uh, they did what they wanted to do and I did my prayer. I prayed against them. And I thought, wow, you know, we, we are serving the Lord, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We are serving a God that <laughs> overrides any powers, no matter how much power they might have or they might manifest in their own lives or in the lives of others, our God can override all that because He is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And that boosted my faith in such a way that every time I've prayed, uh, in particular about the weather, in particular commanding the clouds to go to a particular place uh, or move away from a particular place or send rain to a place or blow wind somewhere to clear the air. That's always happened. It's always happened. Iran is an important country as far as the Bible is concerned because it is in the last day prophecies and it has been from the beginning. Uh, it's not a new country, new man-made uh, country. It's been there for a long, long time from the beginning of the history really, the beginning of mankind. And it is very important and, and I said that in one of my videos regarding uh, COVID, that was two or three years ago, and, um, and I say that again, the peace of the world depends on the peace of Iran, and, and, and there is no two ways around that. I know there are other countries that are important and role players in the world, um, naming some of them America, Britain, and also Israel, uh, and we know they're important. Each one plays a different role. 
good or bad, we're not talking about how good or bad they're playing, but we know they are role players and they will be in the last days too. Anyway, uh, when I heard that there was drought and people were, were warned that there would be shortage of water, particularly in the capital, uh, what I did, I prayed. Now when I pray for rain or such things, I command the clouds. So I commanded the clouds to go over the skies of Iran, all over, north, south, east, west, clear the air of any polluted particles, wash the cities, towns and villages with rain, with the dew of heaven, fill their dams and fill all their wells without damaging any properties. And that's exactly what happened last week. It rained and rained and rained and it's probably still raining as we speak. It rained for a week or more. All their dams were filled. All the rivers that were dried out were filled and all the reservoirs were filled and no properties have been damaged as far as I know, as far as I've been following. But I wanted to share this scripture from James, where, where James in, uh, in, in his book says, James 5 verse 17, Elijah was a man just like us, just like you, just like me. He wasn't an uh, extraordinary person, he wasn't very, you know, he wasn't a superhero. But there, there were superheroes of faith. For us, we have to look up to them and be like them. We have to be imitators of God. And look at these people to be encouraged. He was just a man, just like you and, our, and me, just like us. He was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it didn't rain on the land for three and a half years. For three and a half years it didn't, it didn't rain because he prayed earnestly. Again he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crops. You know, you are thinking, I'm just a man, I'm just a woman, I'm just an ordinary person. But God says, Elijah was just a man. James says that, and he considers himself the servant of the Lord, although he was the brother of Jesus. And he calls himself, he starts his book by writing, by saying that I am the servant of the Lord. He humbles himself, but at the same time he's saying, look, as much as we humble ourselves, what we should do, but we have been given that much power to pray for things to happen, to pray for situation to change. The big situation, not just a situation in your own life, in your own circle, the situation of the world can change. A nation can change. The fate of a nation can change by your prayers. The same passage says, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Your prayers will prevail. Don't ever underestimate the prayers of a righteous man. The stone that the builders rejected became the capstone. You might be the capstone in your own circle that have been rejected by people around you. Press on. Keep praying. Command the obstacles around yourself.
to move away. Command those mountains to be thrown into the lakes, to be thrown into the seas. You've been placed in that circle, you've been placed in that environment, you've been placed in that city, in that town, in that village, in that family, you've been placed in that workplace, you've been placed there for a reason. If you've got a job, God has given you that job. As bad as it might be, as horrible as it might sound and look and feel, but you have been given that power to change things. Maybe this is your test to change that place, that environment, that workplace, that family, that city, that street, that village, that road. You might have that, you might be given that power, but you don't even know it. But you have to ask, you have to make yourself available to the Lord. Like Nehemiah, make yourself available to the Lord, to be used by Him to change things for good, not for evil. Wherever you are, See what the Bible says about life, about you, about your circumstances. It is not exactly spelled out in the Bible, then you need to seek the face of the Lord. Kneel down, pray earnestly, ask God and He will reveal it to you. As I said before, there are certain things that we do know are wrong. There are sins. Are you doing any of those? Are your colleagues doing any of those? Does any of your colleagues know that you are a Christian, a practicing Christian, not somebody, a nominal Christian, somebody who just has the tag of Christianity or goes to the church on Sundays and goes even to the church meetings on Wednesdays, let's say, or, or prayer meetings, but doesn't practice in their lives what the Bible teaches. Are you one of those? Then you need to change. You need to shift things in your life, even if it means leaving your job altogether. But I tell you, before you leave that job, before you leave that position, you need to do what you can to change it. If it is possible, you do your best to change it. Then if it's not happening, then you leave the rest to the, to the Lord of Lords and King of Kings to change. But you've done your part. Then you walk away. Shake your sandals and walk away. Don't ever do your job just because your boss, your manager tells you to do it or how to do it. Do it for the Lord. The Bible teaches us, whatever you do, do it in the Lord. If you're a housewife, house husband, you know, we've changed terminologies of everything to suit the ears of certain people because it might offend people and it doesn't offend anybody because it's only offending the authorities who have their own certain agenda. And they're setting all these things as stepping stones to obtain what they want in the end, to get to their purpose. If you're a, they've changed that housewife or house husband now uh, to housemaker. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe because they thought it's a too low of a job but it's not too low of a job, it's actually a highly position. There is a lot involved. There is a lot involved in the, the affairs of a house to sort out. Only a housewife knows that, or a house husband, or somebody who is working in the house, somebody who has quit his job to attend the family, attend the house, like myself, and attend the affairs of God.
there's a lot involved. In that house, in that circumstance, in that environment, in that circle, you have a position to change things. Like I said, if you're a housewife, if you're a house husband, if you're going to a workplace actually, if you're working from home, if you're in an office, if you are a police officer, if you're a teacher, if you're an engineer, if you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, if you're whatever or whoever you are, you have been given that position to change things for God. Maybe start with your own behaviors, your own attitude towards people, towards customers, towards other colleagues, other staff, other people around you, whoever they may be. But first, seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be given unto you. Seek God's purpose for you in your life. And I'll tell you, he will give you that. He will show you what that is. But you have to be earnest in seeking and have a clean heart. First thing first, ask for the forgiveness of your sins. Be washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then ask for his guidance because the counselor, the Holy Spirit will lead you through all these things and you won't need any teachers. And he'll tell you what you have to do to please the Lord and do the right thing in that place, wherever you are. And remember this, you can try to please everybody around you, but you will always upset some people. Always, even if you do your best to please everybody. If you're a people pleaser, but if you please the Lord, do what He says in the Word of God. You will still please some people and hurt some people even, upset some people and offend some people. But that doesn't matter because what matters is what God thinks of you, what God considers you as, not what other people think of you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you've given us. Thank you for our health for this day, whether it rains or it shines. It's the day that you've made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The nights that you may give us peace at night and let us have peaceful night sleeps every night heavenly father forgive our sins wash us with the blood of jesus christ wash the sins of this nation our nation with the blood of jesus christ have mercy O lord have mercy and heal our bodies as well as healing our lands in jesus name pour out your mercy, your blessings, lavish your blessings on us and let us have your favour. Let us have your favour and peace, peace that surpasses all understanding. That's all we need, peace and your favour. Because with those, if we have your favour, we have everything. everything we need and everything we want. Give us the desires of our heart. When you have, when we have your favor, O oh Lord, you also give us the desires of our hearts. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart, O oh Lord. We delight ourselves in you 
and everything that you've made these days that you've made thank you Lord thank you thank you that we sleep and we wake up because the Lord sustains us thank you Lord thank you for everything that you've given us all the people that you've put around us and before us our father and forefathers our siblings and friends and teachers and relatives that you put before us to care for us educate us nurture us and teach us guide us and, and, and protect us feed us and raise us thank you for all those people thank you keep them safe bless them wash us with the blood of Jesus Christ protect us from all evil from any harm that may come from Satan and all his dominion I pray O oh Lord that you have mercy on this land and heal this land and overthrow the evil rulers in the authorities, powers in this country, all around the world. Let them be brought down by your people, by your people, whether those are from the lowest of the lows, from amongst the people in the crowd, in the nation, in any nation, or by their own people, by their own colleagues, by their own staff. Let them be brought down. Let them be exposed. Let all the evil be exposed and let the righteous rise up to power and take, take up the places of authority all around the world. Oh Lord, I ask you that you may have mercy on us and let us have wisdom and whenever we have the power to choose or vote for anyone in authorities, let us have the wisdom to choose and vote the right person for that task, for that job, for that position. I ask you, Lord, that you may be with people who are watching this video, bless them. And if they are open and they have opened up their hearts and they are willing to be used by you, use them mightily and greatly in your kingdom, to advance your kingdom in their circle, wherever they are. Heal their wounds, spiritual or physical, and be with them. Let them have joy in their hearts and please you. And stop trying to please others, but please you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us. I hope you listened to this message carefully and took it to heart. This video will be replayed uh, on loop for hours for other people who have missed this live session so they can catch up with us. And uh, please do Put down your comments, your thoughts, uh, and let us know where you are and what's happening in your country, maybe, so we can find out about each other. We can change the world with love. Love is a great, great subject with an astonishing power that 
crumbles the strongholds of Satan. Satan doesn't like love. He cannot manifest love. He does not like it. He cannot see it. With love, we can conquer it all. I love you and thank you again for joining us. And I'll see you again with another message or a prayer session. Till then, goodbye.